Coach Jim Good, thank you so much for, for coming on the Christian Coach Podcast. I know we connected a, maybe, Bob, almost a year ago. Um, we had a connection there with my former college coach, and now he's you guys as a tennis you know, high school coach. Um, but my, my first question always is, and you listen to the podcast, um, what does it mean to you to be a Christian coach? Well, thanks first, Gene, for having me on the uh, podcast. I am honored, humbled, and blessed to uh, connect with you, so thank you. Um, loaded question, powerful question. I love the question. And I guess uh, for me personally, it'd be asking the same person, uh, what's it mean to be a Christian doctor or a Christian lawyer or a Christian banker? And the emphasis is on Christian rather than the coach. So rather than being a coach who's a Christian, I do want to consider myself a Christian coach. And so for me, that means um, without Christ, I am nothing. And the audience is the audience of one and knowing that that is my platform and my identity is not in what I do, but in whose I am. And so over the past few years, God has really taught me that. And I guess uh, to just kind of elaborate, it, it turns more into being a coach of significance uh, rather than being someone who's striving for success. Uh, I think of success as me and then significant is about others. And so I'm learning to uh, have that priority. And then I'm a big John Gordon fan. And uh, John Gordon says this, when you're bigger than your purpose, you have a career. But when your purpose is bigger than you, you have a calling. And so for me, I, I know that coaching is my why, it's my calling, and I am blessed every day to get to do what I get to do. So yeah. uh, loaded question but man i hope that answers where i'm going. no it does it does i'm taking notes already um oh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> and yeah big john gordon fan as well um he's yeah. come to speak at liberty a few times and you can tell um and here at liberty and probably uh in other christian schools he can be a little bit more blunt about the the heart of his messages you know yes, but sir. but at you know clemson football he needs to disguise it a little bit and he yes. does a great job of of, yes. of giving them a uh, uh, Christ's love in, in a, in a different vessel, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's a, a great guy. Um, let's go back. Um, as far as you can, as, as far as you want. Um, okay. and, and how did you get involved with sports? Um, what was your upbringing like? Um, and, and how did you get to have a, a, a relationship with Christ? Okay. Incredible question. I'm uh, excited to share. I, I guess I go back to eight years old. Okay. Uh, my mom and dad, we were driving. I grew up outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So uh, Aliquippa was the town I grew up in. And as we were driving down through the main uh, strip, Franklin Avenue, I remember there was a there was an automo uh, auto body shop and they had a sign uh, baseball sign. -ups. And so my dad says, hey, we're signing you up for baseball. And so I was eight years old and I just fell in love with uh, team sports and played baseball from the age of eight all the way up through high school and into college. But then about uh, at the age of 12, I went to a smaller Christian school and got to experience soccer. I started playing soccer and then I played uh, basketball. And I ran track and just started to fall in love with sports at that age. Um, biggest lessons and teachers of my life have been athletics and being able to share those lessons with my my student and my athletes uh i'm just so grateful for the role athletics has played in my life yeah um and what what was that like so um were you did you have siblings pushing you to, to be better um and or were maybe you're the oldest and and push everyone else to be better um yeah <laughs> I am the oldest of four boys. So my okay. mom and dad, I always tease my mom. She has nice. treasures in heaven. She has crowns in heaven, raising <laughs> four boys. So I'm the oldest and we're all named with the letter J. So I'm Jim. I got a brother, Jay, brother, Josh, and a brother, Joe. So you can imagine growing up being the oldest brother, just uh, battles in the backyard, one-on-one. -on -one. My brother and I would play to 100, one-on-one uh, -on -one basketball. And when it got about 99, 98, it yeah. got pretty intense and elbows to the teeth and mouth. But, uh, man, growing up and thinking about those days, my, my brothers and I, just a great relationship, uh, yeah. family, so important. And uh, just incredible memories thinking about yeah. growing up playing sports together. 
Yeah. Well, was, was that a Christian household? Did you guys go to church or did you come to faith we, later? No, we did. My, I'm grateful for um, parents who are born again believers and they taught us the right way. So I was going to church uh, in the nursery and Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, prayer study, Bible study, youth group. So I look at that, um, that season of my life and I'm just extremely grateful for the sacrifices that my parents made and raised us in a, in a Christian home. And then about the age of eight, I accepted Christ as my personal savior. And my dad was able to lead me to the Lord. And at the age of eight, didn't, didn't know all the answers, didn't know all the questions, but I, but I do remember there's a heaven, uh, there's a hell. And I wanted to spend eternity in heaven with Christ. And as I kind of grew in the faith, he, he learned and taught me so many lessons um, about my priorities and, and, you know, making my faith my own. So I'm grateful for that um, yeah. Christian family that uh, taught us how to serve him at a young age. Yeah. And so you said you played baseball in college. Um, I did. How, how did now, how did you end up being now a high school basketball coach? Yeah. So baseball, yeah, like any eight year old, my, my dream was to play major league baseball. I was going to be the second baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates. That, that was my goal. And uh, I love baseball. They, they probably could up. have used it the last few years. Yeah, it's been kind of <laughs> the last, the last 20, so, 20 years. Die hard, so. die hard black and gold. I'm going to root for those Steelers, those Penguins, so still bleed black and gold. But um, when, I, when I started getting into my teenage years, I found out baseball for me was just a little slower. My, my, my ADD, my, my personality, my A-type man, I just gravitated towards basketball. So I was able to play basketball and baseball at a small college, Christian college over near Tampa, Clearwater Christian College. It's not there anymore, but it's right where I was supposed to be. And uh, it's funny, when I graduated from Clearwater with my bachelor's in physical education, I took a job at Highlands Christian Academy, just a little south of Boca, and they asked me if I'd be interested in being the baseball coach. And I was like, no, thank you. It, it, it just, I just I, not burned out, but it was slower for me, more analytical. And I was like, basketball, I want that indoor sport. I want that, I want that fast paced game. And so I've really gravitated towards basketball and been coaching now starting my 25th year. Okay. And here at, now at Boca, um, yes. you, you also are the assistant athletic director. Um, Correct. What are some of the transferable skills between being a coach and an athletic director that, that you've learned from being a coach and an athlete that now you're using um, to help other coaches? All right. Loaded question. I love it, Jan. <laughs> I think number one is uh, sacrifice, uh, personal sacrifice. As an athlete, you need to make those sacrifices to be successful. I've learned that as an athlete. And then I've learned that as a coach as well. And as an athletic director, you, you do have to make sacrifices. It, it is uh, time demanding. So you need to learn how to balance your time. And I think athletes have to realize that you're a former athlete and coach as well. And I'm sure you've learned the balance of, you know, practice time and meetings and studies. So I've learned that. And then also communication comes to mind. Um, being able to um, verbally communicate as an athlete to your coach, maybe, you know, your frustrations, your, your maybe suggestions you have as you go into a leadership role. So as an administrator, as a coach, being able to really communicate uh, to my players, to my parents, to, you know, former coaches, I think those are some things that come to mind. Yeah. What, what is the one central message that you want your coaches to know um, and to believe in once they leave or retire from Boca? It's about people. You know, I think uh, I've learned that in the last three or four years. It's so easy to get caught up as a coach in the X's and the O's. And it's about relationships. And so many times we place that uh, emphasis, you know, on the trophies and the banners, which are all great. You, you I think that's biblical. You, you play to win, you do your best. God wants us to be excellent. But in doing that, sometimes we could um, just kind of get things out of balance. And it is about, it's about people and valuing people, uh, learning a lot about leadership with John Maxwell. We mentioned yeah. John Gordon, yeah. but just that relationship with you can, what you can have. And, and I'm seeing now at the age of 45, you know, it's just Father's Day. Um, nothing more humbling and exciting when these former players reach out and they, they, they forget the scores. They forget, you know, the good, the bad. We, we do have our memories, but they remember how you treat them. And uh, I'm just learning to place that 
that value on people and on relationships. And I hope our coaches uh, realize that and they're doing a great job here at Boca. And I'm honored to serve here in that role as the assistant athletic director. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for, for being thorough in those answers. Um, yeah. Um, I, I listened to a few podcasts that you've done before. Um, okay. And I'm going to tee one up for you here. Okay. Uh-oh. And then I'll let you go. All right. You can okay. go as with this topic as, uh, as far as you want. Um, right, I'm getting nervous what, here. I'm getting nervous. What, <laughs> what is the value of us um, now, not even just coaches, but human beings of going to bed tired? Mm. Love it. Well, that hit home about four years ago. Um, I think God requires us as Christian, um, whatever your occupation, to work hard. The Bible talks about whatever your hand finds to do, work at it with all your might. And so my philosophy is to work hard, be a hard worker. I'd rather be, you know, um, oh, no, someone who works hard and really strive to then after that day of hard work to be able to have the family time and then go to bed tired. Uh, in my past, when I wasn't tired, this is where now, I can be vulnerable and open up where things in my personal life started to lose balance. And as a man, if I'm not going to bed tired, I'm starting to uh, get involved with things that I don't need to get involved in. And, and as an, even a married man, you know, when we're um, up at night, 11, 1130, 12, 1230, um, kids are in bed, wives in bed. This is where, you know, those TV shows uh, go on my phone. And I just really had to learn that I need to go bed tired and, I'll tell you what, getting up at 5 a.m. allows me to go to, be, go to bed tired. It's funny. Last night, my wife is an incredible uh, supporter, encourager. We do movie night this summer. And so we have four kids and they each get to pick a movie. So we had our family Monday night's movie night and we started the movie at nine o'clock. And I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. It's nine o'clock. But I made it to 1030 and went to bed. Um, but I'm up at five. That's part of who I am. I get up, I, I, I read, I exercise, I get my prayer walk in. And so I, I encourage people, hey, work hard, uh, go to bed tired and, and then wake up and get ready to do it all over again and serve God passionately. Yeah, I um, about I, I had my first child in 2017. Um, huh. And my wife is a nurse still, but she used to work full time at the hospital and, and okay. she would at that time, right before that time that she got pregnant, she was working the evening shift. And so okay. it was from three o'clock in the afternoon to 11 o'clock at night. Ooh, and that's, and, that's and so that meant most of my afternoon and evening, it was, I was by myself. And so I had to learn how to cook, first of all. And then um, <laughs> I, that, that meant I had to stay up for her. I wasn't going to go to sleep. And so I stayed right. up and, and, and we would go to bed at midnight or so. And we would wake up, we didn't have kids. And so we would wake up at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. And I was like, wow, what a life, you know? Yeah. And and then we had a child and, 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 she, and, we, and we had to change that dramatically the opposite way. Um, and right. so now, and she never was a good sleeper and she was up at four or five o'clock in the morning. And so right. I was like, as a survival mechanism, let me wake up in the morning. And, right. and, and then I read, um, the miracle morning, uh, by Hal Elrod, okay. um, not, not a Christian book at all, right. actually, but it, it talked about, you know, his routine and how he, he became a, a successful person, but I could see some traces in there that were definitely biblical. You know, he might yeah. not be selling it as a, as a, as a biblical book, but, um, and he talked about waking up and having quiet, you know, um, silence, a few minutes of mm-hmm. silence, a few minutes of prayer few minutes right. of meditation in there and right. um, exercise, reading um, yeah. and, and visualization. And um, there was another one was uh, positive affirmations. And so yes. I started doing what he said by the book. And yeah. and I could see my life change dramatically okay. by having a morning routine, you know, yes, sir. And, and it ended up that now I have to wake up at 430 in the morning to have a morning mm. routine. You yeah. know? <laughs> um, it is, uh, but but it it's a life it's, changer. It, it really is. And I keep telling everyone that I, you know, I come in contact with, wake up early. Like, right. and, and at first, if you're waking up at eight o'clock, it's not going to happen, yep. you know, overnight that you're going to be able to wake up at 430. But 
Start yeah. waking up 10, 15 minutes early every day. Yeah. Um, and, and you get to a point where now I don't even need an alarm clock. 4.30 yeah. comes around and it's like, well, yeah. And, and so it's been great to have that quiet time where I can pour, you know, God can pour into me so that I can pour out to everyone, my family, you know, more, you know, more importantly. But then yeah. at eight o'clock at night, you know, yeah. I'm like, this is it. Like there's, <laughs> there's to slow down. Yeah. If we want to do movie night, it needs to start at 5.30. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> movie <laughs> matinee. Yeah. And so that I love, that's why I love the West coast is that I can watch sports still and still there go to bed go. at eight o'clock, you know, there you go. Um, the East coast. We I, have that listen, problem. Gian, I, I appreciate you sharing that. That's encouraging <laughs> yeah. to me because I, I see other people and, and you, you try to tell other people who aren't morning. I, I never was a morning person. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd hit my alarm and hit snooze three times, have to be at work at like seven 30. I'm hitting, you know, the alarm at seven ten, running around and God just got a hold of me spiritually, physically, and I, I call it the 5 a.m. club. And so 5 a.m., I'm out and, you know, Christian music, doing the grateful walk, prayer walk, and spending time, intentional time. And like yeah. you said, that's the time where I ask God to, to fill me up as an individual because my day's about to start. And as, as a coach, and you can relate to this, we are pouring into so many other people, whether it's our athletes, our families, our wives, our kids, you know, co-workers. And in the past, I tried to do that on my own and I just fell flat on my face. <laughs> and I think we can do so much on our own, but when you really realize, God, here I am, I'm an, I'm an empty vessel, fill me up. And, and the time to do that for me is yeah. the morning. And I yeah. love getting up before, before the sun and it's dark out. And I got some incredible stories, but yeah. man, it's great to hear that you, you've bought into that as well. Yeah. I feel like it, it just practically speaking too, it gives me a mental edge when I get to yeah. work. You know, yeah. I drop off my kids at school at seven o'clock and I get to work right. and I'm ready to go. Like from, right. you know, and I feel like me coming into the office at seven fifteen and sitting down I'm like, there's not many coaches that I'm competing against that are here, right. uh, are in their yeah. office at 715, you know? Um, and, well, I and, wish, uh, I wish a 45 year old Jim <laughs> could go back and tell 25 year old Jim. So you're way ahead of me on that. So I'm glad you brought into that. Yes. And, and that's why I keep talking to like our GAs and any younger coaches that I come in contact with. So right. I know you can wake up at nine o'clock in the morning. I yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. But just, just. Just, just make this change and it will affect everything else. It's like a domino oh, yeah. effect. Yeah. And I love uh, Coach Cheney. He used to coach at uh, Temple. He passed away, Don Cheney. He used to have 5 a.m. practices. And I remember hearing about that. And what he said was, well, when my guys know they have a 5 a.m. practice, they're not out at midnight. They're yeah. not out at one in the morning. These, these, these dudes are going to bed at 9, 930 because we yeah. got 5 a.m. practices. <laughs> so I started doing not every day, but with some of my teams, these 6 a.m. practices and the initial reaction from, you can imagine, 16, 17 year olds yeah. are like, coach, come on, really? But we have had some of our most incredible practices at 6 a.m. And I, I just love it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, coach, my, my, my last question is yes, you, you talked about you, you have a family now and you, you, your kids are a little older than mine, but and it, it talks about personal sacrifices. Is there such a thing as work-life balance? Um, or is that just a fictitious thing that people say it so that it sounds nice? But um, what, what, what has your experience been? Well, again, another great question. Um, I got it wrong so many times earlier in my career. Got it wrong. And I'm, I'm learning as I get older. But you have to have that proper balance. And there is. Um, I'm learning in the past, I would, as an athletic director, as a coach, you're, you're constantly on call. You, you just are, there's yeah. things that are going to happen, but I've learned now um, to try to not take work home with me. Um, that that's big, whether it's a, whether it's a notebook, whether it's a scheduling and to really try to, when I leave the office, you know, leave the office. Yeah. Cause now yeah. my kids need dad. They don't need coach. Uh, my wife needs you know, Jim, the husband, and I, I'm learning. I, I haven't always got it right, but there is that balance. And I think if any, everybody can go back to COVID, you know, as we come out of it, I think that was the major pause, the major pause button yeah. in my life to where, you know, the, the life of a coach and athletic director, teacher, it's just nonstop. It's just bang, 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 go, go, go. And so when 
God literally removed sports, <laughs> removed school. It was, man, family meals, which a lot of coaches can yeah. really relate to. It was family time. It was more family movies. We'd go in the backyard and, and, and play cornhole. We would play Frisbee golf. We made up games. My, my yeah. eight-year-old daughter would make up a game. It was her night to do a game. And I look at that as just precious memories. So as I as we kind of now go back into the normal and the routine, th there is a balance and, and you can do it, but it's being intentional about, you know, work, family, spiritual life. And that takes, that takes being in God's word and him showing you areas that you need to, to get rid of or to back out, to delegate and things like that. So yeah. appreciate that question. That, that's good. Well, coach, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Uh, it, it's a great blessing to, to, to speak with you. Um, awesome. how can we be praying for you? Well, Gene, I really did enjoy the time to be with you. I thank you for what you're doing on the Christian coach podcast, an incredible guest. And just uh, thank you for who you are and your thank heart. You. And uh, I just enjoyed being with you. I'm wearing on my wrist, uh, two bracelets. It reminds me to pray every day. The gray one says faith over fear. Uh, my brother and I both teach here at the school and we both coach, uh, my 14 year old nephew, uh, two months ago, had a pretty dramatic event. He basically collapsed in PE. Uh, he was born with a heart disorder, and he mm. had open heart surgery just a month ago. And so he is recovering. He is doing incredible. He actually did a small workout, believe it or not, <laughs> yesterday with our summer basketball program, did some okay. ball handling. So God is just at work in our family. But I just asked for prayer for my nephew, Joshy. Uh, he's 14-year-old. Uh, coming out of surgery and just uh, his recovery. And then secondly, the purple one is our headmaster, uh, head of school, Wendy Stapleton, uh, was just recently uh, diagnosed with brain cancer. And so she's our head of school and um, she's up at Duke University right now. I just I just spent um, an hour at Starbucks with her husband and uh, just talking, just connecting with him. And so she's on starting week four, of seven weeks of radiation and chemo. And so her name is Wendy. And then Wendy. my nephew's, nephew's name is Joshy. So I, I'd appreciate prayer for those yeah. two individuals and the family. So thank Sounds you, Jim. All right, let's pray. Yep. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you for Coach Good to take uh, taking the time to, to be here with us. Um, Lord, I'd uh, like to lift up Joshy. Um, just a teenager having to have heart surgery. That That's heartbreaking, Lord. And um, but we know that you're in control, Father, that you use this story um, that to, to, to impact many others um, for your kingdom, Lord. And uh, Lord, I just ask that you'll be with Joshi's family, um, Coach Good and his family to give them support um, and, and help the family in any way they can. Um, that you will, you will be glorified um, through the way they handle uh, Joshi's uh, situation. Um, and Lord, be with Wendy and her family. Um, getting diagnosed with brain cancer is never good news, Lord, but that you are a healing God and that you're, you are a, uh, a miracle maker, mm -hmm. Lord, that, that we believe that you, you, you have the power to heal her if it's your will, Lord, but we, we entrust her life and her family's life and all of our lives, Lord, to you, because you hold us in your hand and, and, and you're in control of our lives. You know what's best for all of us. Um, Lord, thank you again for this conversation. And allow us to be in a position to impact young kids, um, young men and young women um, to, to come to a closer relationship with you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Coach, you. Coach, my, my, my last question is okay. you, you're an exercise nut, just like me. <laughs> um, and how, how can we make and why is it important to have exercise as a priority in our lives? Well, again, another great question. Um, I think of the verse that says bodily exercise has value <laughs> and God's word attests to that. So yeah. there is extreme value in exercise. I, I want to be, you know, the best Christian. And when I'm healthy, I can help people. And so the healthier I am physically, the healthier that I am spiritually, I can, I can help people. And so I think that's number one, when I'm, I'm in, decent shape. I can help the family move on Saturday uh, that live on the third floor and we're carrying down a refrigerator and piano. Yeah. And I can do that and be tangible and help with that. So uh, my, my personal fitness, it, it's allowed me to, I think, serve 
uh, other people. And so that's what I think about when, when I'm healthy, I can help and spiritually yeah. need to be healthy more than physically healthy. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. All right, Gene, and thank you. Thanks for what you're doing, man. Keep impacting, keep serving, keep shining. I love what you're doing, man. Thank you. All right.